you through our HLT, just the first tank of our system, how we bring water in, how we circulate it, and how we get it up to temperature for performing the mash. So starting out, we um, just changed the filter here so you can see the dirty filter on the, on the sink and then the water comes in the wall, runs through the filter, and goes up and fills our hot liquor tank or our HLT. Um, this tank here is from Stout Tank and Kettles in Portland, Oregon. All of our, our entire system came from them. It's a three barrel, about 120 gallon HLT. Next, let's jump over to our power distribution panel. We are a all electric brew house. So we bring a bunch of power in and then we heat a bunch of heating elements that you'll see in the tank. We'll show the details of that in the future video. But this is where the power comes in, heats some heat sticks like we have in a hot water tank at home. Then as we come over here, I'll show you quickly um, the panel that actually controls that box and determines whether or not the tank needs more juice or whether or not it's hot enough. So we'll talk about that in a second. Next, I want to spend a fair amount of time here talking about the pumps and the way we recirculate the water. Um, it's a uh tank, so as we rotate that water around, it'll stir the water, and we keep it, it uh, at one solid temperature, so the temperature probe reads it properly that way. But uh, starting out, one of the biggest challenges was is how to find the right pump. We originally used this pump here for multiple purposes, and it's really just a water pump, so it's not designed to to be your brew pump or anything like that. It just doesn't have the capacity. This pump and all of our pumps you'll see on these videos all come from CPE Systems out of Canada. They've got great prices and just do a good job with customer service, so we really enjoy them. And then the pipes we have, they all come out of Brewers Hardware, so you can find them. They're out of Huntington, California. Again, great bunch of guys. For them, you'll want to go to brewershardware.com. And then if you look, you can see that we've got some three-way ball valves there at the top. Um, and then as we circulate this and it gets the temperature, we're ready to mash. It's a simple hook up a hose to that port you see there that's, uh, that's blocked currently. And it sends the water the other direction without messing with the pump whatsoever. And we can start to mash in. Next, let's pop over and I'll show you some of the electronic components or electric components that we have for this. So this simple little switch that we put on the pump so that we can turn it on and off, no big deal there. But the real magic is in these controls up here. This is the PID controllers. and This is what um, reads the temperature gauge. And then the bottom number you'll see is where we've set the temperature we want it to get to. And the top number is what the temperature is reading currently on the controller. So if I freeze that here for a second, um, the bottom two just ignore because they're just not hooked up to, to um, uh, temperature probes right now, so they're just going to keep airing out. But the top one is hooked up to the HLT. It's reading 112 degrees right now, and we have it set to 172, which is our normal strike temperature. So you can see the, uh, the cord coming out there that goes down to the tank, and then the cord going up actually controls the SSRs in that power distribution channel or power distribution box that I'll show you in just a second here. As I pan over here to the power distribution box, I will freeze it here at the bottom. I'm not going to open this box up today. We'll do that in a separate video because that's a whole conversation all by itself. But in a nutshell, the power comes in from the outside power company. It goes into this box and is attached to a bunch of SSRs, solid state relays that are controlled by the other PID box that I showed you just a second ago. When that tells it to turn on, it sends power out to these cords, which are attached to some heating elements like you would have in your water heater at home in that HLT. We've got four 5,500 watt elements in there, so a lot of power going to it, a lot of heat. Um, and again, in, in the nice thing about electric uh, brew houses, it's 100% efficient, so 100% of that, that heat and that power is dispersed into the actual water as opposed to say a gas system that uh, that uh, only you know only about 40 percent efficient so there's our HLT in the system end end we will have future videos where I will walk through each of these in much greater detail from the power distribution panel to the PID controllers and exactly how that all works everything we've done um, everything we have here we've built in-house we built ourselves so we're pretty proud of that. that's kind of cool so again the goal is just to show everybody what we've done and maybe help some other brewer along the way